Congo, I went to Congo, at a conference with Oso. You know, we are also time the presence of the Lord. And myself, I believe everything it happened in Congo because of your prayer. Especially uh, the way really God used me in Congo uh, with Oso. And I was just saying myself, I said, wow, only God can do this. In my knowledge, my understanding, I was saying I, I wasn't able to do and to see what's really happened. We are about a 500 uh, delegates from a uh, neighbor country. You know, 500 of foreign people who came from overseas for the conference. And uh, it was not that easy, about 500 outside of the country. And uh, we spoke to have a meeting in uh, one of our big stadiums, but because of the election which is happening in the country, we were not able to use the place, but the venue which we had a meeting with it more than I think more than twenty thousand uh, people, and there was also there's a lot of testimony I can give you about what really God did in Congo and how much God blessed me, and uh, I enjoy myself, I enjoy the food, uh, I eat a lot, you know, I eat and I eat and I eat. I say I'm going to eat all those food again in Australia. I miss my food. I thank God for that. I was just thinking about Pastor Fred. I say he's eating a burger, but I'm eating the right food. But what I can do, you know, was awesome. Amen. Can we just pray, God, as we're about to hear the word of God? Our Father, we just come before your presence in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we come to celebrate your day. We come to celebrate who you are, Father, and what it has done for our life. We come to give you glory and the honor. We come to knowledge you, Father, the King of glory and the Lord of Lord. We come to knowledge you, Father, as the source of our life. We thought you, Lord of God, we can't do anything. We thank you because you are the one who defined our life. We thank you, Father, because you give us the purpose, Lord of God. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Father, we call upon your name because the Bible says, when we come together in your name, you are in the house. Father, use me as your instrument. And let us be blessed, Lord, oh God, in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And the people of God say, Amen. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Now, today I just want to uh, share with you a little bit about the Father's Day. You know, I know we are celebrating the Father's Day today. You know, we received some gifts. Some people are called, say, they are singing this song, Pastor, A.P. Father's Day, some people, but some people are crying right now as you and how we are celebrating this day. Some people are so upset, and some people are so sad, and some people that don't want to even talk about it. When they look how far they are coming, and they consider this day, they say, why I need to celebrate this day? When I was in Congo, same story. I've been preaching from Tuesday to Sunday, Tuesday to Sunday for three weeks, no stop. No stop. Every Sunday, most of Sunday, I was preaching about three times. No stop. And uh, after our conference, you heard the news. You heard the news about uh, the administrator of the church. The one who look after building and everything of the church. Before the last day of the conference on Saturday, I finished my preaching around 8.30. And uh, I feel in my spirit, I need to pray for somebody. And I went to call one of my friends and said, no, we need to pray for this guy. As I'm saying, we need to pray, we received a phone call. The person who spoke to pray, he had a heart attack. And my heart was so broken. And I said, we need to pray. And when we get to pray, after 30 minutes, we receive another phone call. He got passed away. Wow. I know him personally. He was about 41 years old man. Young man. With four children. Follow the story. Four children. The first one about nine years old. 
And the second one about seven years old. And the fourth one, and the third one about four years old. And the last one, one years old. Now, when the youth come, the people that was in the church, and when the silence, no one was able to speak and to say anything. I look at Pastor Israel, and Pastor Israel looked at me. And I look at Mommy, Pastor Israel's wife, and she looked at me. And I was speechless. And one verse came to my mind and said, Strength yourself and take over. And I stood up with tears in my face. You know, why the tear in my face was not just because of the men, but I look about those children. I began to think about those four children growing up in the pain situation. A young woman, she's about 35 years old, young woman, and be a widow with four children. Now today, you know how we are standing about to celebrate Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And this is the story. What happened was this. You know, the church was quiet. No one was able to speak. Stood up. Began to speak. I said, okay. What we can do? And then uh, I took Pastor Israel and his wife and a couple of people from the church. I said, we had to go to the farm. And we went there. And the pastor was not even able to get in. I'm, I was the only one when I called Pastor Frank, I was the only one who was able to speak. Everyone was like silence. They didn't believe that can happen like that. No one accepted it. And the straight way I called Pastor Frank, I said, you know, you're in the hospital, this is what's happening now. And uh, I was one by taking one by one and bringing them where the body was. And I look at the man. I know him. Just like sleeping peacefully. The eyes was open. And I'm the one who went there and touched the face. And I closed the eyes. And then the question, I said, Father, why you can do this? Why you can do this thing, God? Now, when I was thinking about Father's Day, I began to consider about what happened in the Congo and how will I can explain to those young four children about where they are only going to say a big father's day. For the story, we bury the body. And I said to Pastor Israel, please, you need to help those children now. Keep them in your house until you find another venue for them and their mother to move in the house they were living because otherwise they would be very too tired. Now for this story. And now what happened was Pastor keep the children and every every night I had to leave the children to play with them and try to do something with them that would make them forget about them. And now I asked them to sing this song. We are singing and the four years old boy I called him and said, I want you to sing a song. And he comes and says, Pastor, I have a song to sing. It breaks my heart. You know the song he sings, he says, Lord Jesus, I love you. I know that my father is with you now. Please, can you let him come again to be with us for a short time and then we come back again? A four years old boy. And the, the one year old boy, he get, when we put the picture, he looked at the picture, he began to cry. Now you know how we are saying Happy Father's Day. But there's some people in this time it's a bad day for them. There's some people that are happy about this day, but some people are crying because they are grown up before the Father. No one was able to look after them. But I got the news for you. Hallelujah. 
I got the news for somebody in the house. The person who feel like I didn't have a father to look after me. I grew by myself. I was rejected by my father. There is a news for your life. Hallelujah. Even though your biologic father leave you alone, even though your father was not able to take care of your life, even though your father he didn't know what he's supposed to do as a father to be there with you every day, but there is somebody I know who says, "I will not forsake you and leave you alone. I will be always with you all the day of your life." Hallelujah. There is a father who is worthy, who deserves everything in your life to be given to him. You know, begin to look all of us, maybe we are here. We grow up with pain. But let me say this to you, somebody in the house. There's somebody who's there for you. There's somebody who's there for you. There's somebody who's there for you. The real father. Who's able to carry you the way you are. No matter what. Amen. No matter what. You know, sometimes we say, you know how we are here sitting here. We say this. You know, Pastor, I lost my father when I was 40 years old. 14 years old, I lost my father when I was 4 years old. I lost some people, you know, I didn't see my father. My father abused me. My father did this. My father did this. My father was wrong for this. My father was wrong. But let me say this. We have a father who never abused anyone. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We have a father who's able to carry you no matter what. Oh, come on, somebody. We have a father who's able to stand in your side no matter what. We have a father who will stand with you and finish with you. From the beginning to the end, he will be there always. Without any limit. 